Hi, this is Bill Wetzel from TheSurfRatsBall.com, and this is Tip of the Week. First of all, I'm probably one of the few guys out there that tie direct. Tying direct meaning I tie direct to a uh, to the plug as opposed to using a clip. The reason I do that is because back in the day there was just dual locks. And the dual locks I found had opened up on me on a few big fish. More than once, maybe, I don't know, five or six times maybe on a big fish. I mean, you, you get a you know, fish of a lifetime, 40, 45 pound fish, and a friggin' clip breaks up, it breaks on you, you're like, what? I mean, it's just, it's like devastating. So, at that point, somewhere, I probably was in my 20s, um, I switched over to tying direct. Now, today, you know, they have tactical anglers clips, those are great clips, I have heard nothing but good things about them. So, you know, I encourage you to do what you want to do. I mean, if you want to use the tactical angler clips, use them. Or any other clips like that, use them. I don't because my plugs are already set up for tying direct, and I can tie direct with my eyes closed. I, I don't even need to. I mean, when I'm when I'm tying a plug, I'm not even looking at at the plug I'm tying. Usually, I'm looking at the person talking to them. So, you know, eventually, I can put on I can put on a plug. I can tie it almost as fast as you can clip it. Sometimes not, but <laughs> um, all right. So, here's how I rig it. Um, this is this is um, basically my South Shore of Long Island Montauk rig. Um, same thing. I use a uh, 90 pound test barrel swivel, St. Paul, Roscoe, either one. Spros are probably one of the greatest, but I don't use the Spros because uh, I, in my head, I think I'm going to overuse them and they're going to break. Once these get brassy, they, they they don't look good. I just throw them away, and I've never had one break. So that's the reason, but the Spros are probably the best. So then I use a uh, polymer knot on this. Polymer knot's 100% knot strength. And you can look this up online, the knot, but it's 100% knot strength. And do not, I repeat, do not use an improved clinch going from the braid to your barrel swivel. Um, some guys, they, they, you know, they, they'll tie directly line to line. I don't like doing that. Um, I, I like the barrel swivel idea because, I, one, if I'm on a rock in Montauk, I can kind of grab the barrel swivel. It gives me something to grab onto. And number two, I think it does cut down on the line twist. So it could be in my imagination, but that's how I feel. But, you know, to each his own. So then I clip the tag. So then I use a 80-pound test mono most of the time out at Montauk. Uh, it, it, even on the South Shore, you know, I used to use 50. 50, when we, when we before Braid was here, um, 50 was king. 50 pound test monos, leader, 20 pound test Andy, uh, Braid. That, that was king. Um, so about, I don't know, about 15 years ago or so, um, I had a customer tell me, he's like, I'm using 80. I'm freaking 80. How do you tie it? It's not that bad. So 80 pound test straight, straight mono is, is, is great. Now, Oh, what about fluorocarbon? And here's all I got. All I got to say, fluorocarbon. Look at this. Look at this. Just look at that plug. There's freaking metal hanging. There's split rings, fucking hooks, all this shit on the plug. Bad paint job. You think fluorocarbon's actually gonna make a difference because they can't see the line? I mean, to me, it's freaking marketing. You know, unless you're fishing back bays and it's going to give you more confidence, I mean, if it's going to do that, go for it. But really, I mean, all you need is mono. I like the clear Andy um, 80. So how long is it supposed to be? You know, I don't take a measuring stick. I'm just like, eh, about that long. You know, my, my leaders are kind of long. Probably, I don't know, this might be like a 40-inch leader, maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, I got 11-foot rod. So if I'm on a rock... I'm, I'm way above the water, and I can reach back, and it's it's not gonna it's not gonna touch the water. If I got like something in back of me, like if I'm at a bridge, or I'm at the light, which I hardly ever fish out in Montauk, and I got rocks in back of me, you know, I'll shorten up the leader because I don't want the leader hitting the rocks 
or or a bridge or something like that. So you adjust the leader to what you need. So then I put that on the barrel swivel. You're just using an improved clinch knot. I just go around three times, through, through again, wet it, cut the tag, boom. So now I'm tying direct. On some of my plugs, I have the split ring. So like this is a Bob Hahn, uh, this is a Bob Hahn um, metal lip. And it has a split ring on it. Now, what the, if you, I put the split ring on it just to give it this motion. Now, without the split ring, it's not going to get that kind of motion. That's why I, sometimes a clip is good. I mean, you guys who use clips, you're going to get that motion no matter what. So, when you're tying it to a split ring, this is where you got to be kind of careful, and it's kind of a pain in the ass. I, I, I'll admit. So, because you want the split of the split ring where it connects, you do not want to tie right there because it's going to go back and forth, back and forth, and it's going to cut your line. So that is what you got to be careful of. So you want your split of the split ring touching the eye of the plug. You don't want it up here where, where you're going to tie it. You got to be really careful of that. Once you tie it though, it's not, it, it doesn't, it won't go down in the split of the split ring. And that's it. Now I got my split ring there to give it that motion as opposed to a clip. And in my opinion, in my experience, I've never had one of these a split ring fail. These are spros. I, I say spro, 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 spro only on the split ring. That's all I'll ever put on there. So, um, and that is why I tie direct.